good afternoon uh, thank you for taking time uh, for going through our uh, presentation and uh, this is something we have uh, done in capital and uh, that is something we wanted to uh, share with the audience as deep dive on partners redemption capability using the serverless i hope uh, you guys will have some takeaways from this session before we really dive into the details some details on uh, uh, capital loan capital loan is the first us bank to exit out of legacy on premise data centers and go all in cloud so you can imagine how much of a cultural change or technological transformation a company would have gone through to achieve such a feat so right now we think we are a technology company which happens to be in a banking business and we are still a founder led company which stays true to its mission which is change banking for good there are a lot of ways in which we do that like we give back to the community like we do participate in a lot of community events but when it comes to the tech we do that in the form of open source so we have contributed a lot of projects as open source projects which came from our own implementations to call few like critical stack which is a security focused kubernetes offering and rubicon which is a ml based tracking tool and there is a data profiler which is more like to ensuring whatever the data you use for your ml related things to ensure the consistency of the data so those are the few things on top of whatever we already have for the open source so i called out few when do we do run some programs like coders so this program is run across the united states for middle school students who are kind of uh, we run this program who at least envision themselves as future technologists to see how they can shape up their career so this is completely run by our associates so that program is called coders this is one of the way again we give back to the community and we do have a program called coda which is more like non technology focus associates who want to get into the technology stream so we run this program for 6 months and then we empower with them all the tools and all the things what they need to succeed in the industry so this is the program we as a coda and all of our associates come from this program as well so again before we dive into this some details on me so i am an engineering manager at capital loan i have been doing java related things and also on the spark related things on developing initial days of uh, java and spark and uh, i have written a lot of uh, uh, blogs on our medium and also on our primarily on big data topics and i have also spoke in a lot of conferences on the same area if you are interested you can hit me in my linkedin and twitter what do you nagesh Stay here. Yeah. Thank you. you. Guys, can you hear me? All right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for showing up here. And uh, I am Nagesh Kumar Vinakota, software engineering manager at Capital One, and uh, I've been building teams and leading teams to fill uh, full stack applications. And I'm also a tech speaker. And you can follow me on uh, LinkedIn and as well as on Twitter. So, what we're going to cover today? So, the agenda is like a ten thousand foot view of what we do at Rewards, Capital One Rewards, and we will cover about like partnership redemption redemption process. So, the framework which we are talking about, and as part of that, like we'll be covering about our partner specification configurations, which are essential for all the partners. So, we call it as three Ds. So, we cover more later in the topic, and we are also talking about the data collector. So, and also how do we handle the failures? in case of handling huge data and we talk about the restartability and retries as part of these failure scenarios then we'll be covering about redemption flows with serverless architecture and and we talk about how do we handle the data publishing part and how do we ensure that our data is secured and as well as like we have processed successfully by enabling the controls and as well as validations and finally sending the notifications to the partners 
and finally we end up with question and answers. Okay, Be before we go into the agenda, like how many of you are like uh, customers of Capital One products? Excellent. Uh, Ma'am, which one you are using? Is it which card you are using? Sorry, ma'am. What is that? It's the blue card. Sorry. So venture. Venture one. Okay. And sir, how about you? Which one you are using? I think someone raised up their hand as well. Sir, which one you are using? Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Excellent. Anyone of you guys from this side? Excellent. Like, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Like, I, I see like few audience are here like using Capital One. Thank you so much for that. And like, yeah. Capital One is using wide variety of products and Quicksilver is one thing which gives you 1.5% cash back on all transactions. Likewise, if you're a free, frequent traveler, you'll be getting like a uh, uh, lot of miles if you're using a VentureX card. Likewise, there are other products like one of them is like a Saver One card. If you are like uh, a frequent uh, uh, person to go to restaurants or dining or entertainment, you'll be getting like a 3% cash back. So let's say like a small screenplay here, like let's say my friend Gokul is interested in like uh, taking a card. Hey Gokul, like do you have a Saver One card? No, I really don't. Okay, so what's, what's, what's your like uh, uh, favorite spend? Like where do you use your spend? No, at least uh, interested in entertainment. Entertainment. I'm not sure the I believe like everybody is here like very much interested in entertainment rather than tech talks. You guys agree with me? Excellent. So, like, so do you do you use any Capital One card right now? No, oh, I said done already. Right? Okay. So then, like, why can't you try for Saver One card? You'll get three percent cash back on such things. Maybe I will. Okay. So, so basically, what we're going to talk about here is like Capital. We we came from rewards program, like where a customer will get uh, like uh, rewards in the in the form of loyalty for the transactions that they made. So, what we are going to cover here is so like we have like a lot of credit card customers like and these customers like one of the customer maybe like uh, maybe Gokul after he got his Saver One card he went to Starbucks and he swiped his card for a coffee and uh, well he will be making like a 3% reward on that so such transactions will be sent to rewards earn program and we have a series of jobs or processes where we calculate these transactions and we calculate the uh, earn and finally we update our databases so that the customers can use their rewards to perform other action or other redemption processes likewise we are also kind of partnered with other card other other uh, companies like one of them is like one of the retail one of the famous retailers is like walmart so we are also partnered with that likewise we capital is also partnered with few more uh, companies so which i cannot disclose right now but uh, so this partnership redemption, redemption process is pretty much like a common generic framework which is across for all the partners. So what we do here is like we pull all the customer, uh, uh, customer accounts who are like partnered with that further customer for their, for their company and then we will be uh, running this pro partnership redemption, redemption process to issue checks, coupons to the customers. And finally, we also push this data to our data lake just to ensure that like to run uh, internal reports and as well as notifying our customers. So this is like a, at a 10,000 foot view. After that, like, let's talk about like partnership redemption process. What we do here. So each partner has their own specifications. Like one partner will come up and say that, hey, issue a coupon for all the customers who have like who are qualified with a $25 rewards. Like if a customer is having a $25 rewards balance, they, are, they will be like issuing a coupon for those uh, customers. So all such kind of partner specific configurations, we are like coming up with one JSON based format document and we will be uh, configuring those information. And this process, what it does is it reads that partner configuration and reads the data from the database. It, the data can be scattered across various places which I'll be covering in the next slides. So basically, it will pull the data and stays the data by enriching the data or by filtering the data and performing partner-specific checks, which I called out earlier. Few partners will call say, say that like, hey, uh, filter out all the customers who are not qualified for this process, or else few few partners will 
uh, have an additional checks they they want to send a notification to their customers as well like why they are not qualified for this particular uh, run in such cases we perform all these partner specific checks and then finally we have our core uh, set of uh, apis which does the redemption redeeming the balance and eventually updating our internal databases and finally noti notifying all our partnership customers so if i deep dive into this uh, partner specification configuration we call it as 3d's here data source data select and data sync so what do we do here as part of data source as i discussed earlier the partner's data can be scattered across three places it can be at various places it could be at tables or it could be in the form of file system or it could be from the any other upstream systems all that information will be configured as part of this partnership specification document and then and also the data select is something where we are saying that like what kind of checks we want to perform as part of these accounts that we are pulling it from the systems so once the data select and it it can also be an enrichment it is not only just a, a select kind of a query kind of it it is more more like enriching partner specific data and finally if our framework is i mean if the partner is interested in pushing this data to any database like we'll be pushing that or like if we are interested in pushing to the streams any any kind of streams like so that other systems can start using it they can we can push it to that data sync and as well as file system so it's it's purely is uh, based on like partners configuration that he is interested in so before like we are covering this a slide so few years ago like we have like a series of spark jobs to uh, perform this partner redemption redemption process that means like each for each partner we were like having like a series of spark jobs and we are running these machines for 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 all the day and so our goal is to build a resilient architecture and as well as like a scalable solution which can support all partners and as well as cost effective solution is something which we are considering into it so for that one so we came up with this framework which is like uh, reusable and scalable and also we were able to onboard new partners in less time so which is a like huge win for us so coming back to this uh, process once we have configured this uh, 3d's like data source data enrich and as well as like data sync the next step would be giving this configuration file to the actual process which is running on a emr cluster and this is again a schedule based and as you all know like once a emr cluster is provisioned and then be this partner job uh, will read this configuration for that specific partner and perform all the work it is which is needed for that partner so let's say once our partner configuration file is ready then let's say if we have like partner a partner b and partner b and like once the partner configuration is ready the next step would be like giving this a file for the data ingestion part so as part of that so we call it as a data collector so in this case it it re, it scans through the configuration file and it says like data source is like hey uh, you have to pull this information from this uh, from this dynamo tables or like from this s3 file or from the upstream systems then this this emr spark job which will pull that information and then the next step would be data select where we enrich the data so as i said earlier like few accounts are qualified for a coupon a few accounts are qualified for a check and few accounts may not and but the customer also want to know why he is not qualified for this run in such cases we also send a message so that's where we are doing the enrichment the question here is like let's say since we are handling with a lot of data if something goes south uh like if the process got abruptly uh failed in such cases we really want to take care of not to process any duplicates of it like so how do we handle that scenarios in this case for example uh once once uh, this uh partner configuration is he reads the document like a b c like three accounts it came up before it pushes that to the data sync it checks the staging table or it checks whether the data is already available in the staging process for example in this in this example i'm saying like abc out of this like we see that like stay in the stage table b record is already available in such cases it will push a and c records to the data sync and once it writes to the data sync it will also update the staging table now 
there might be a question for you guys like, hey, what happens if the database connections fail for the staging table? Or else what happens if there is a failure with pushing the data to the data sinks? In such cases, we also have handled the retrace logic. And in case after the, after the series of retrace, if it failed, it will also write to a dead letter queue. And finally, there is another process which will read the data from the dead letter queue and push back the data to the data sinks. So this is how we are handling with respect to the data collector with the restartability and retries. And when I call about the restartability, again, like let's say after like 20 minutes of process, like when we are handling huge amount of data, after 20 minutes, if it failed, when it, when it restarted, it will resume from where it failed. So the next thing here is like we want to cover about in case like one of the partner is interested in pushing this data to the data sync, I mean like Kinesis streams. In such cases, we want to cover that scenario. In the Kinesis stream, again, like we have made completely this as a serverless. We don't want to do a batch based processing. In this case, and we have a series of lambdas here, like let's say uh, lambda A is very partner specific, config, partner -specific uh, configuration and uh, where it receives uh, a batch of records from the Kinesis stream. And let's say uh, Lambda B is like kind of a reusable, uh, so where it interacts with like a, a lot of REST APIs and as well as like maybe interacting with any other uh, source systems. So, so in this case, uh, the record went from, the record passed from uh, Lambda A processed it and pushed that record to the Lambda B and it interacted with REST APIs for writing the data information across our internal systems. And, and there are like uh, 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 lambdas which also do the database interactions. In this case, we really want to minimize the number of uh, network database calls that we made. So we came up with ba batch uh, insertions here. So again, like Lambda, Lambda C is all about like maybe writing to the uh, database. And in this case, let's say if any of these uh, messages failed processing by these lambdas, so it will also push that message to the dead letter queue. And there is another process called retry lambda. This retry lambda will process all these, uh, it will like uh, process, reprocess them by pushing them uh, to the corresponding lambdas. For example, if you see here, this, this particular process, dead letter Q, and it also has like, hey, this message to be processed on lambda A, this message to be processed on lambda B. So this, this lambda is on a scheduler based, and it will like uh, read this uh, dead letter Q and push that message to the corresponding lambda. Uh, well, Gokul will cover the uh, data publishing side. Thank you. Thank you, Nagesh. So what uh, Nagesh was uh, discussing on the data collect and also the redemption process, whatever we have gone through for the particular customer or the customers of the partner. So what happens when it comes to the control and the data validation is something like, till this point, all the information, whatever we have, it is only in our internal database. It hasn't actually gone out for the real consumption. So the main reason we have some toll gates at this point is we are calling that as a control and the data validation because we want to ensure the accuracy of the data before it really reaches the hands of whom it needs. Right? So that's what we are calling it as controls and validation. In simple terms, the controls is something like uh, the example what our Nagesh was calling, like uh, uh, if a particular account or for the partner, if they have defined something like if they haven't spent $25 for that period of uh, redemption process, right? then they are not really eligible to get whatever the means of redemption, be it a check or be it a, a coupon or any of this. right? So they are not really eligible for that. We know that the partner specific redemption process is going to take care of that. But what control process does is the partner redemption process uses a particular data source to do the redemption. But control will go to an alternate data source in order to arrive at the same conclusion and apply the same logic. In this example, like customer's account not having $25 is not eligible for redemption. So that same, we do it systematically for all the accounts for the, the whole partner and for all the partners. So that's what, in simple terms, we are calling it as controls. And the data validation is something like our DAs 
take care of the similar thing, but they apply the same logic. So we ensure at least doubly the, all the things before it really goes out for the partner, everything is accurate. But as Nagesh was also discussing, not everything goes as per the plan, right? So we need to have our bases covered. So this process, as part of the control or even from the data validation, there are ways in which at least most, not most, on a sunny day, most of the accounts will get into the case where we are calling it as a, a thing which makes it to the data lake. Most of the account will get into the data lake and that's when it really goes out to the partner and also to our internal users so that they can generate the business reports and goes out to the partners so that they can really make use of the coupon or cash or the check. But there are cases where the controls will find out a lot of fallout case. Even though the redemption has really executed that, but still as per our data validation, we may not be reconciling. So for those cases, we write those things because we don't want to halt the whole process or even for that particular thing. So we, we go by each and every account and then only just keep the fallouts as a part of another file. Then we take care of that as a back office process and rest of the thing just flows through the data lake and also the, our partners. So this, we have initially done this for one of our partner as Nagesh was putting in one of his slides, this was actually previously done as a series of batch uh, specific for the particular partner of those things. So what we would come up with is a specific framework which can be scaled for any partner and use it for any upcoming partners. So we have initially done it for one of the our home improvement chain related partner. And then uh, that we have really used it for two or more partners which we have done it in the last couple of years. So that is actually the major win we see with this. And I think that's all we got. What's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? Uh, can you share this? And uh, uh, please show up in uh, Level four, we are at S10, and uh, we are like actively doing the hiring as well. So we have our uh, hiring team as well here, and uh, you can show up at uh, booth 710, uh, S10, and as well as uh, we, you can also join us uh, to today at Zanzibar, and we are like also doing a happy hour. Please feel free to join us and learn more about Capital One, and we are looking forward uh, your participation. Thank you so much for us showing up here. All right, thank you so much.